Jungle Cruise debuted in the top spot at the box office this weekend. The adventure starring Emily Blunt and Dwayne Johnson easily debuted on the top spot, making over $34.2 million. The Green Knight, starring Dev Patel, opened in second place, earning $6.78 million. Old fell from first to third on ticket sales of $6.76 million. I like how we can take it all the way out to the decimal point. $6.4 million gave Black Widow fourth place and a domestic total of $167 million. Though. Matt Damon and Stillwater debuted in fifth place with $5.1 million. A new streaming series airing right now on Peacock. It looks at the world of Olympic gymnastics. CNN's Rick Damagella talked with Olympian Dominique Dawes for this story. Elite gymnastics will keep you up at night. Golden delves into the world of Olympic gymnastics and the women who compete in it. The streaming series features and is produced by four-time Olympic medalist Dominique Dawes. I'm excited to be an executive producer of Golden along with LeBron James, Maverick Carter, and another amazing group and team of people. This is really going to shine the light on the Olympic pursuits for Olympic hopefuls in the sport of gymnastics. I feel like I know my gymnastics better than ever. Everyone's used to seeing the glamorous experiences as Olympic gymnasts on the the podium or once they make the Olympic team, but no one's really had access to the raw and very intense footage of how we get there or don't get there. Many of these athletes are not going to make it. They don't see the journey and the road and the level of sacrifice it takes to get there. And as a three-time Olympian who went through this for much of my childhood, um, it really brought back a level of great anxiety, a little level of uh, PTSD uh, watching this because I know what these young girls are going through. It's just a scary feeling when you only have one chance to be perfect. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. SA Live getting ready for their back to school special in primetime. That's right. It airs next Tuesday, August 10th from 7 to 8 p.m. right here on KSAT 12. And today they have an encore episode for you packed with summer fun. Hey, Mike and Fiona. Well, happy first Monday in August. Yes, it is already August and new month. We got to talk food. Of course. <laughs> Great restaurant, kind of a, a deli uh, combination. Deli just down home cooking the Hayden and tuna melts are fantastic, but we're going to be making a tuna -less tuna melt. A tuna less tuna melt? Tuna less tuna, 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 tuna melt. A lot of alliteration <laughs> with that one, too. <laughs> All right, and Jen is catching up with the cast of Virgin River on their brand new season. I love this show because it is like a warm hug. If you're a Hallmark movie fan, you will love Virgin River. Oh, okay. The Hallmark. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, and talk about a warm hug. How about warm cinnamon rolls? Oh my goodness. Cineholic is here and these buns are exploding with flavor. And what is trending in these desserts? They are yummy to say the least. And she's the oldest female judoka in Olympics history. And she's from right here in the San Antonio area. We're going to hear from an Olympian about her journey to the summer. Games. San Antonio Public Library is here. Some nature crafts, just a great way to get out and enjoy and uh, great little things to do with the kids. And Okay, well, now let's look at the radar and satellite there. You see some new development going on across the hill country. We're done with the rain here in San Antonio for at least a little while, but we'll watch what happens off to the north. Some of that could work its way in. A little bit later this afternoon and this evening. Meantime, still some light rain going on between Eagle Pass and down towards Uvalde. So here's what the forecast looks like today. We'll be up around 86 or so. 40% chance of rain. Some of it could be heavy. And then tomorrow, I think the threat shifts south. 30% chance Tuesday and Wednesday, generally south of San Antonio. Another slight chance Thursday, and the rain chances go away. And it feels a lot more like summer as we get into the weekend. But good to see the rain today, guys. Yeah, it was. Thank you. Did Mike say tuna -less Tuna melt. Is that what I heard? Did I hear that right? Yes. So what would you call it? A non-tuna melt? I don't know. We'll find out. SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, what, no. What's next, you ask? How about a torch <laughs> oh, to toast bread? I'm standing clear. Hello and happy Monday. Everyone, good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorsiza. Is that, is that, You're oh, supposed to toast your buns, not burn them. Okay. I'm going to be eating that sandwich. And I'm Mike Ostrage, and I'm having a lot of fun here with mallets as well as flamethrowers <laughs> Next, today. So. He's going to want to push elevator buttons. <laughs> okay. Is All right. an elevator? <laughs>
Oh, <laughs> it's lunchtime, and what are you hungry for? And there's a very good chance you can find it at the Hayden. It's a little bit, I know, it's, it's a little burned bread in here. So uh, it's a little bit of something for everybody. It is a deli inspired with sandwiches and something special and one of a kind in the Alamo City. Yes, head chef Bill Corbett from the Hayden is here to show us a few of their signature sandwiches and how not to burn the butts, right? That's correct. <laughs> I'll keep that back yes. to you, Bill. Yeah, we'll use this over here in a second. Uh, okay, okay, so what are we making first? So first for y'all, we have the Larry David sandwich, which okay. is a Kerber enthusiasm inspired sandwich, but also really falls into the, the deli-ish inspired diner feel that we have. So you have your classic white fish salad, your classic Nova Lox, capers, little pickled onion, cucumber. Okay, so how do I get started? All right, so for this one to start off with, you have some nice fresh romaine right there, so we'll put okay. that on the bottom of the bun. All right, the, the well-toasted bun. <laughs> yes, A little bit of the, the pickled sumac onions that are right there. Okay. And we're gonna reserve a, a little bit of those. toast on that bun. A very hard right. toast. And so these ingredients, tell us a little bit about, you know, it's the Larry David, but on the show, he wasn't really a huge fan of the ingredients in this sandwich. Yeah, he said it was a little bit too much fish, and they did make a point that you could brush off the capers. <laughs> uh, now the fish? Yeah, so now you have our uh, smoked whitefish salad, which we actually use uh, redfish for. So we have that South Texas touch to that. Okay, and just nice big. Oh yeah, just keep just on the top of that. right on there. That's a technical then, term, slop it on there. Yeah. <laughs> then the capers. A little bit of the nice briny capers go on top of that to give it a little pop. And what's interesting when you have the, the capers on here and then the smoked salmon, I mean, put this on a bagel and it's a, one of those good bagel sandwiches. You're back. not far away. Okay, now okay. what? Now we go with the beet cured uh, Nova Lux. Oh, okay. So we actually take some beet powder and mix that in with uh, the salt and the sugar to help give it that color. And then we do a nice yeah, cold smoke on baby. there to make it Cucumbers. nice, smoky, fatty. A little bit of cucumber we put on there to give it a little bit of crisp. So all these ingredients work, right? They work together. Yes, yes. When, when first tested, uh, the sous chef had a moment where he looked at me and he said, it's, it's ridiculous that this tastes as good as it does. It does not deserve to be this good. <laughs> so is it one of the more popular sandwiches? It definitely is. And what's nice about it with us is that it really falls into what we're trying to do over there at the Hayden. And talk a little bit about what you're trying to do, because it's a mixture of like old school and, you know, new yeah, school. Yeah, old school dining, and right? new school. So we're very much like deli-ish, <laughs> heavy on the ish in a, in a diner space. You know, we want to be that place that's welcome to everybody. And just having like really nice classic food, but just tweaking it a little bit. And it does have, between the lox and the, the fish in there, it, it's got that good deli, deli-ish flavor to it. Yes. So. Mm, okay. All now. right, so now what am I making here? All right, so now we're gonna have uh, another type of salad, but this one's actually uh, plant-based since that's all the rage nowadays. Okay. So we're actually gonna make a, a tuna-ish tuna melt <laughs> with uh, a chickpea and almond base is what we're using in that instead of uh, plants. Okay. Or that's what we are using as plants. Mm -hmm. Uh, put a little mayo, uh, we're gonna have a little mustard, and then the, the base of this one is, is basically just a good old southern uh, chicken salad base. So how'd you come up with this idea? So with this one was actually uh, inspired by having a girlfriend that is plant-based and needing to go on a picnic with her. And so I actually came up with uh, this idea for doing, instead of having like your traditional chicken salad, to still being able to play around with some. And the nice thing about the chickpeas, because those are very, very healthy. A lot of good protein in those things, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. What would be your favorite dish? at the restaurant. I know because you've got all sorts of great sandwiches and everything. They always fluctuate around. I mean, I think if it's your first time coming to us over at the Hayden, the, the first thing you've got to try is the pastrami sandwich. What's so special about it? We're, what we're doing is you know, your classic New York Jewish deli diner pastrami. And I think anybody that's from Texas knows what brisket is as far as like a Texas barbecue idea. But seeing it in the light of on a, like a pastrami, where you're basically taking a brisket and you're smoking it, but you're putting like a different type of seasoning on it, mm -hmm. it really can show people like a different way to enjoy brisket. Okay. And kind of seeing the connection between like some of these Jewish classic delis and like a normal barbecue joint. And then speaking of classic deli, uh, great rye bread that that goes on, and then yes. you're going to melt the cheese on top of that. So I put a nice big uh -oh. scoop of the chickpea melt on top of that. Okay. And probably put a big second one over there. Big second one. All right, there we go. And you're located oh. right there on Broadway, just south of uh, Hildebrand, correct? Yes, in between Hildebrand and the Witty. Woo! 
brunch on the weekends? Brunch on the weekends from 10 to 3, and then we do uh, dinner from uh, till 10 o'clock now on Fridays <laughs> and Saturdays, 9 o'clock Tuesday through Thursday. And we are going to start opening up for breakfast on July the 20th. Okay. So we'll be open from 8 to 10.45 for breakfast. See, I have one of these torches at home. I need one. You're redeeming yourself from, from you. the bus. Okay? There you go. We're going to finish it good? off with? A little bit of arugula and roasted tomato salad. Ooh, really? Because I love Ooh. arugula, too. All right. If you'd like more information on the Hayden, just go to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. And they've got classic food, and then they've got classic cocktails and some great specialty cocktails. And guess what? We're going to be making those coming up just a little bit later on. Yes. Well, it's one of those binge worthy shows that a lot of folks may have already finished. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. It is called Virgin River, and they just released season number three, and our Jen Tobias Trusky got to sit down with some of the stars and hear all about it. Take a look. Well, the wait is over for the Netflix hit show, Virgin River. All the love, secrets, and drama, much anticipated. And the TV couple, Mel and Jack, one of my favorites. So many fans of them. We are so excited to chat today with Alex Brackenridge, who plays Melinda Monroe, and Martin Henderson, who plays Jack Sheridan. Hello, you two from San Antonio. Howdy. Hi. Hi. Hey there, Jen. Happy to be here. You know, I was researching you guys and I realized there are so many social media uh, profiles, Instagram pages dedicated to this couple. What is it about this couple, you think, <laughs> that has everybody falling in love with them, rooting for them? Well, the woman's hot. <laughs> that doesn't hurt. <laughs> You're not so bad yourself, okay? <laughs> <laughs> wow. But I made the leap, and now it feels like you're the one trying to protect yourself. Obviously, the chemistry is great, though, between you two. Um, yeah, I think I think that has I think that has a lot to do with it. It's this classic, like, will they, won't they love story? Can they push through all of their own emotional? Uh, components and roadblocks to finally come together. And I think that, you know, I think that that got audience members invested. I started watching already season three and I, yeah, I'm smiling watching you two interact. So it, there's something very special about that on-screen chemistry. Now, when season two ended, you find, find Jack bleeding on the floor. So what can we expect in season three? Cause that obviously was a big cliffhanger there for us. It, it becomes a bit of a mystery, so uh, you, you won't get the answers quickly, um, but it's kind of fun because Jack ends up losing his memory from that night, so he can't recall any of the details, but as the episodes go on, little things trigger his memory and he starts to try to piece together fragments of what he can recall, and he slowly tries to piece together who it is. But there's quite a few suspects out there um, I'm still convinced it's probably Charmaine, but um, you have to wait to find <laughs> out if that's true or not. What are the challenges of playing these characters? Luckily, I, you know, I'm I'm so damaged that it, it's sort of just <laughs> easy for me. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That was going to be it's, my line, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard sometimes because you know you want to do it. Uh, you want to do it authentically, uh, you know, the, the, you want the audience to really believe in these characters, otherwise the whole thing falls apart. Um, and there's some days where you just don't want to do it. You don't really want to delve into some of the darker, more uncomfortable moments of the character's psyche, but... I enjoy being able to put myself in those places and really commit so that uh, I can take the audience on that emotional journey of the character as authentically as I possibly can. Will there be a season four, but also is there going to be another cliffhanger that we can anticipate in this season three? It's a big bomb uh, that gets dropped. And well, there's a couple actually, there's a couple cliffhangers, but I think that, you know, the, the main event is, uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm very excited to see what people say about it. Yeah, season three available Thanks now on us. Netflix. It's such a pleasure chatting with both of you. I enjoy watching the show. Thank you all. I truly believe that anything worth having is worth fighting for. 
If you'd like more on Virgin River, of course, head to our website on EssayLive.com and click on the As Seen on Essay Live tab. So we want to know, what are you binge watching right now? Uh, the Fall. Okay. On uh, Amazon Prime mm -hmm. and Gillian Anderson. It was actually uh, you came told out, me about. This. It actually came out back in I think 2012, 2012, 2013. Is that when it started? Yeah, it's based in Ireland. It's about a serial killer, and uh, it's pretty good. We're hooked on it. We're in, into season three right now. So what about you? Catching up on The Handmaid's Tale. Almost oh, done. My, my Almost wife done. loves that one. So. so let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter what you're binge watching right now, and we'll see what y'all are into. All right, still ahead on the show, getting ready to hit the beach. Or maybe you want to bring that island vibe to the city. We're showing you three tropical fashion looks. But first, the classic cinnamon roll has evolved, where you can mix and match flavors to create the cinnamon roll of your dreams. And what's surprising, so many customers find out about this sweet shop. Find out the secret next on SA Live. Welcome back to SA Live. I'm getting dizzy just looking at that picture. You can create the cinnamon roll of your dreams at Cineholic, and people are really amazed when they find out that everything in the story is all plant-based. Oh my gosh, even less guilt. And Nikki Reeder, owner of the local Cineholic, is here to help us make some of their newest creations and talk about the latest at Cineholic. So it's kind of like a cinnamon roll bar, right, if you yes. will? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Exactly. And these cinnamon rolls and all the toppings are vegan and plant-based? Correct. What? Every single thing in store is plant-based, vegan. And so the whole process is there's about 8 million different things to choose from. Yes. Something like that. All the different frostings, all the different toppings, and you just go and, like you said, create your own dream roll. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we start out, um, customer comes in, and we have a warm, freshly baked cinnamon roll that we make Check. in store. Yes. Okay. We make it throughout the day, so it's always fresh. Mm -hmm. And then you choose from any of our 20 plus frosting flavors that we make in store. So obviously, this is just a small These are sampling. Just a few, right? Yes. Okay. And this is one of those, and you can either create your own or you have some specialties. And this is one of the seasonal specialties, and it's German chocolate cake. German chocolate, right. So that right now, you're using the, jo uh, the chocolate frosting, and you can just spread that around. Mm -hmm. And then next, we yes. can put Tell me what's next. some of okay. our brownies that we also baked oh, this me. morning. Okay. You just the chop, get, get some of those. Lord. Wow. There you go. Okay. They are so Thank good. You. One of okay. our most popular items. Okay. And there then we just go. break off these pieces, mm -hmm. right? There you go. Mm -hmm. Just tuck them in. Yes. Uh -huh. Put them to bed for the night. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Yes. And then we'll sprinkle a little bit of that oh, coconut good. custard. So good. Very chocolate. Then coconut custard. Oh, it's nice and moist and chewy. He's Very still good. on the brownie yes. part. Okay. There you coconut go. Custard. Yes. Uh huh. And then uh -huh. we'll finish it off with some pecans. And then. and then you've got your German chocolate cinnamon roll. Yum yum. Okay. Oh, now, there you go. so folks can build their own dream cinnamon roll, or you have some of them kind of already finished, like yes. like these, right? Yes. Some of these are some of our most popular uh, cinnamon rolls that people will just come in and order. Um, mm -hmm. Our Cookie Monster uh, cinnamon roll, our Southtown Brew, which has a nice hazelnut frosting, some uh, uh, coffee bits and coconut, mm. so good. Um, and fresh fruit to make it healthy. Fresh, yeah. and then we've got our Breakfast in bed, which is mainly fruit, uh, strawberry frosting. And the ultimate in decadence seems to me is putting cookie dough on a cinnamon roll. Let's yes. do it. Sure. Do it, yes. I'm so on it. yes, our cookie dough is mm -hmm. also plant based, so you can eat Get it the raw. Ice what? Rising first. Oh, I'm sorry. I got all excited. <laughs> I'll just put that aside. Yes, and you can order. Um, people come in and just buy our cookie dough. You can buy it out of the tub and make cookies, you know, at home, or, or, or you can just, just eat, it eat it raw. Exactly. <laughs> and you are located right south of downtown, right? Yes, right across from Rosario's, um, between Brown and Gus's. Okay. So there you go, and you can add a little bit of chocolate chips if you'd like. Like a little blanket. But you okay. make your own your own dream roll. <laughs> <laughs> and then what did you use? Where's that drizzle? Uh, okay, there's you some got chocolate it. drizzle. There you okay, go. You know what? I'm going to do a little bit there of brownie. You go. Okay, take this up a notch. <laughs> All right. Cannot like go wrong. No. What okay. do you think? You know, 
I was dizzy looking at the picture starting off, and now I'm just in like heaven. Yeah, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm yeah. Okay, so what else is there at Cineholic? Um, we have cookies, we have our mm. cookie cake, um, one or two layers. We have coconut macaroons, which are a limited time offering right now. We also have some Dole Whip, and we just started doing Dole Whip with chamoy mass. Uh, oh, so we Mike. have. Mike needs a napkin. So oh, this greatness. <laughs> oh, do you, do you have napkins? It's okay, good. I know that he was really enjoying it. Yes. Yes. So we okay. have some warm treats and now some cold drinks. <laughs> I didn't see that until just now. I'm sorry. Usually we, we take, we make sure. Like the other person isn't just hung out to dry with like food dribbling down their chin. Okay. It's, I'm sorry. I just saw it. Okay. It's hard not to do. Right. So but that good. means it's good. I mean, that yeah. means it's good. Messy food's good food. Yes. Uh, right there is St. Mary's and Alamo right by uh, Alamo. Rosario's. Yeah. Yes. Right by Rosario's between okay. Brown and, and Guess's. And yeah. get them to go and you can order. You can order online, like curbside. Side, um, just or come on in. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. I'll get. Yes. Let Mike get cleaned up here for more information. <laughs> Do you have like a wet wipe or anything? Uh, <laughs> on Cineholic, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the as seen on SA Live tab. He's got sticky fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, when the chocolate's dripping down your face, you know it's good. Hey, still ahead on SA Live, it's like a dessert, ooh, more dessert, and a drink, whether you like coffee or cobblers, where you can find this creative happy hour menu. a charm but you know it's been 20 years I've been trying to make an Olympic team so it's you know it's pretty rewarding just to feel that like I finally met, met my last goal in judo was to make the Olympic team so, and I was always really really close to making the team and things always happen like and yeah I just sometimes I wasn't good enough sometimes I got hurt sometimes there were just you know political complications. Nina Kucho Kelly is making history. So um, I suspected that I might be the oldest person that uh, oldest American to ever make a judo Olympic team Team. Um, but we actually had to like calculate it down to the day because a woman in 2004 she was like 20 days younger than me when she fought in the Olympics so people have gotten close but I'm officially the oldest uh, American that ever fought in the Olympics for judo it's a sport that came natural to Nina as a child who needed this competitive outlet so I actually was uh, seven years old in Albany New York and um, I got kicked out of ballet art class and I think t-ball um, from the age of four up until that point and finally my father was like you know what maybe judo like she won't get in trouble for being a little too rough and being you know a little maniac and so he took me to his club and I started doing judo there and I did it recreationally you know just once a week with my dad then when I was 14 I went to a local tournament and um, I lost to a girl who was a lot like smaller than me um, who happened to be coached by my current coach, Jim Herbeck, who runs Universal Judo. So uh, he ended up uh, being like, oh, hey, like he asked me a few questions about myself and I found out where the club was. And so that's when I changed clubs uh, in Albany, New York. And then that club moved down here uh, to San Antonio in 2006. And so since then, um, I fought in France, like I trained in France for about eight years, but uh, my home base has been San Antonio since 2006. 20 years of training and patience. So surely Nina was not going to let the pandemic stop her training. When COVID first started, um, the places I was working at, my gym shut down and so did um, my uh, judo club. And I'm fortunate enough that I have a roommate that does uh, judo with me and I had some mats in my garage. And so we just, I started changing up my training. I was running, I was lifting at home in my garage. I I was doing judo in my garage and then I actually started doing you know more as the gym started to reopen I started doing you know private lessons here at Eccles Fitness um, and that was really awesome and also what was really cool was that um, I was able to like, share a sport that I really loved with people that were happy to learn it. With that mindset and determination it's no wonder she's headed to Japan and training is non-stop. We are training with no, no AC at this point um, at my home club 
uh, and universal. And uh, the idea is that it's going to be pretty hot and muggy in Japan, and they don't air condition the way we do. And so we really need to be prepared for it to be hot and muggy, which is not the worst. It could be really cold, which would be worse for me, um, but we definitely have to be prepared for, you know, heat and humidity. The weather is one factor to consider, but Nina's weight class brings other challenges. Dito has seven weight classes for women and seven for men. Uh, the unique part of my weight class is that it's unlimited. So the weight class under me stops at 172 pounds. The weight class under that stops at 154 pounds. Mine is over 172 pounds unlimited. And so, you know, I might weigh 210 pounds or something like that, but I could fight a girl who weighs 410 pounds, and this has happened. Okay, so it becomes a very different um, game strategically and technically because, you know, you're half the size of somebody at some point. Now it's time to put all that training to the test. A sport that lit a fire in Nina as a child is now something she gets to share with the world. I'm really like, grateful for the opportunity to, you know, talk about judo and let the whole city know about judo because um, it's an it's a awesome sport. It's a, a great form of self-defense, getting in shape, and uh, it's, you know, made my whole life better. For Reze Live, I'm Jen Tobias Chesky. All right, next on the show, do you like coffee or cobblers? We're making cocktails that are almost more dessert than drinks. You don't want to miss this. And they were good, by yes, the way. Yes, the ones we made, yeah, they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to SA Live. Well, earlier, of course, we talked to lunch with those great sandwiches over there at the Hayden, and now you got to have something to wash them down. We're talking happy hour. Yes, Cassie McLeod, general manager of the Hayden, is here to help us make some of the cocktails and mocktails that sound more like desserts than drinks. <laughs> we're so excited. I'm excited. This is exactly how yeah. to finish out a show. Soul shaker, <laughs> Hayden Cobbler and the Dreamsicle. <laughs> We're going to tell you what that one yeah. is reminiscent of. Think back to your days wandering around the, the shopping malls. So, <laughs> all right, we're going to start. And this is, a, I, I love this one because it's kind of a, a classic cocktail. It's not just a couple of in, ingredients thrown together, but it almost takes you back to the good old days. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, we have, uh, so it is a tequila based cocktail. It's mm -hmm. really, it's perfect for maybe after you eat or a good breakfast cocktail if you want to. Which I don't think um, of tequila being an after dinner right. type drink. Well, the Amaro, the Montenegro is kind of what makes it more of a after dinner digestif that helps you like uh, process your food. Oh, maybe. okay. So uh, starting off with a velvet liqueur. Yeah, velvet valerinum, which is a, a Caribbean uh, almond citrus liqueur. Ooh. So quarter, mm -hmm. quarter ounce, I mean. Quarter ounce, that's right. All right. Now, this. And then that's your Italian Amaro, so that's your digestif. That's a half ounce. Did you come up with this recipe? I did, yes. Oh, really? What are you doing? Just, mm -hmm. just take a bunch of different yeah. things and start putting them all together? Yeah, kind of. I mean, you just think about your different flavor profiles, mm -hmm. um, you know. Tequila. Tequila. A lot of people don't know this, but tequila and coffee go really well together. So you're going to do an ounce and a half of your tequila. Had now no that's idea. a party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I would have never thought. I mean, you know, you think of like Frangelico or yeah. Ramonier mm -hmm. and coffee, but not yeah. tequila. So, and then. Uh, a, a quarter ounce of vanilla syrup. Vanilla. Okay. Okay. This is going to kind of round out all the ingredients there. And then an ounce of cold brew that we um, are roasted by pulp here in San Antonio. Stir so, this all up? Yep. You're going to put ice in it first. Look, we have crushed ice. Okay. And Thanks how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the loose. Yeah. Crushed ice in a small amount of glass does not go very well. It goes all over the table. So we stir this up and. Do you, okay. Are you going to put, you want to put ice in your coffee drink? You have to dilute it a little bit first. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh yeah. Okay. I was just going <laughs> to keep it creamy in there. So, all right. So we do this here. Then stir it up. And. Then strain it. This nifty little strainer mm -hmm. is called a, by the way, because there's two little slots right there, you could pour actually two drinks in uh, one, right? Uh, yeah, at one time, yeah. At one and time. It's I'm not going to waste the booze, so <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to experiment with it. We try it, so it just goes over a glass like that. There we go. And when is happy hour there in the head? So a happy hour is Tuesday through Fridays from 3 to 6. Okay. okay. A little garnish on top. And we and have uh, food and cocktails on, on the happy on hour the menu. On the happy hour menu? Okay. What kind of food? 
We have the um, Brussels sprouts, mm -hmm. our Locky, mm -hmm. the, um, is that good? That's good. Here, take a quick sip before you start. We have a, a um, also a roasted beet hummus that we do for happy Ooh. hour. Roasted okay. beet hummus. Roasted beet, a beet. Ro oh, roasted beet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm. Very good. Good? That's really good. tasty. Okay, okay. next. No. So our next cocktail is going to be a, uh, it's a spinoff of a classic cocktail called a cobbler, which okay. is a low ABV, which means low alcohol. Okay. Um, and so you're going to have your Amonti Amontillado Sherry, and this is all building glass. Oh. Okay. So you're going to do an ounce and a half of that. Sorry. There we go. You know, now that you mention it, that does taste like it would be a very good. It's kind of settling that sandwich that I just yeah, made there you in, go, in the first segment. So okay. that's really tasty. And then we're gonna do a half ounce of our uh, house puree strawberry. So just pour all this. Uh, you could pour. If you want to eyeball it, you can. Just eyeball. Okay. There we go. There that's we good. go. Whoa, that's, all right. That's gonna be okay. delicious. And then a quarter ounce of cucumber syrup. Okay. Cucumber syrup. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you're going to do four dashes of the rhubarb bitters. So of all the things on the menu over there, what's your favorite? As far as cocktails go? Um, sandwiches. Or, or sandwiches. Oh, man. Uh, I mean, you can never go wrong with the pastrami, of course. And then um, the... I love the Ted Danson. It's, that's a really fun, uh, Which fun one's one. Which one? That? That's the, the counterpart to the Larry David. So it's, uh, it's basically a... Uh, um, Corlett, it's was oh a Rachel. I was. It's basically a Rachel sandwich, oh, which okay. is uh, slaw, turkey, uh, Russian dressing. So it's a good one. Oh, that does sound good. Okay. Now just and then yep, nice. the crushed ice. Fill with some ice. And besides the Lewis bag that we've learned about and the nifty little strainer, another little trick with the mint. Remember? Yeah, yes, okay. okay. So this one, you want to use your um, stir mm -hmm. a little bit. Oh, stir a little uh -huh. bit, okay. Because you want to incorporate all the ingredients, get okay. a little bit of dilution, okay. and then you'll start to see the wash line rise. Oh, there we see? go, okay. And then mound it with a little bit more ice. Okay, more ice. Okay. Here we go. Then this, right? Mm-hmm. And then the orange peel to make it look like a little sun. Like the sun with the, with the tree. There we go. Yay! <laughs> and the last one we were talking about, if you've been wandering around the mall as a kid, and what was the favorite drink that you could get right there at the stand right in the middle? An orange Julius. Yes! yes. Okay. <laughs> so this is our spin of, of an orange Julius. What is, makes it a little bit different is that we use coconut um, instead of a dairy product. Um, and then we also use key limes, which makes it a little bit more tart uh, and has a little bit more bold flavor in it. Uh, it is a non-alcoholic drink, but if you want to add booze, a little bit of alcohol to it, you could either do some um, options are spice rum or some sparkling wine. Okay. Shall we? Mm-hmm. Mmm. Ooh. That's really good. That is very tasty. That's really okay. good. Don't forget. It's better the than hay. the ones at the mall. Over there on Broadway, <laughs> just south of Hildebrand, and lunch, dinner, and brunch on the weekends, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, great stuff. All right. Next on the show fashion that makes you feel like you're on vacation. We're showing you three looks that are perfect for the beach or elsewhere. Why not go ahead and channel some island time with style? And Leighton Whittington from Leighton W Couture is here to help you feel tropical. Yes, I'm going to try my hardest. Tropical isn't always my go-to thing, except I found a palm tree shirt. That's about <laughs> as good as I could get out of my closet. Um, but yeah, I'm super into that tropical vibe right now. And I think we all are. But after being cooped up for a year, like maybe we all can't run off to a tropical island right. somewhere, but we can certainly bring those little touches in. And now tropical fashion is going in a different direction. It doesn't have to be prints like this. It's new, subtle things that I'm kind of obsessed with from a local brand. I love that because these brands are local and Texas brands, right? Absolutely. Okay. So our first look is on our model Leah here. We've got this awesome jacket. It's from Lunchroom Anxiety for Richter Goods right here in San Antonio on Broadway. She does these great tropical inspired embroideries and guys, she does these by hand. This isn't just something that you're getting and that there's like a hundred thousand of them. There's only a few. She does the most beautiful 
enriching ever. So these two cans going out on a little tropical adventure for the day, even if you're just hanging out around town, this is great. Throw that over your favorite sundress. I think it's awesome. Look at the stitching Isn't it? on those two cans. It's amazing. I mean, it looks completely, I mean, it looks so perfect. It looks like it's done by a machine. It is awesome. It, she is pretty awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And it is called Lunchroom Anxiety. So I'm going to assume she was hanging around having lunch and this is how she was dealing with anxiety. I'm not sure. Whatever it is, it is fabulous. And I love the pop of color with the green. Yeah. And we just paired this, like I said, with the sundress, the models on shoes, and this great necklace here that was also handmade here in San Antonio by Art Matters and Blue Star. So if you just want to pick up a little thing for your little summer tropical touch, that's a great way to do it. Pop on down to Blue Star, check out Art, Mat Art Matters. All Next, right. we've got Amelia here. This is another item from Lunchroom Anxiety. We've got to see the back of it. This is more of that fabulous, tropically nautical inspired embroidery. We've got this cool little whale with the trident. And down here on the bottom, I don't know if you can really see it, but we've got this great little anchor touch, which I absolutely love. And this is another one of those things. This could be a robe at home. This could be a robe to go to the pool in. This could be something like Amelia did. We threw it over this great t-shirt from Hemline San Antonio. We don't always like to announce that we're a mess, but come on, sometimes it's true. Sometimes you and just have to own it. we love this shirt. <laughs> and we love that Hemline San Antonio has items like this so that we can just be playful and have fun. And again, pop on those tropical colors, those little themes. It's a new way to do it. And I love those earrings. They're fantastic. Also from Hemline San Antonio. And so going into the next look is kind of just monochromatic, right? Yes. So that's something that we're going to see. Well, we have been seeing a lot more of it. Unfortunately, during the pandemic, fashion brands and big retailers even were having a much harder time financially. Mm -hmm. So they had to kind of strip themselves away from all the over dyed products and overused materials. So we did end up with more monochromatic type outfits. And this is another one. It's a combination from Richter Goods and Lunchroom Anxiety for the Pearl and uh, Magnolia Pearl, who I absolutely love. She's out in Fredericksburg. Check her out. She does all this stuff. This one, we've got this great crab that was embroidered on the back. It's so fun. So again, that little tropical touch, but on a really simple garment that feels like you could wear this literally anywhere over a t-shirt dress, a belt, and these fabulous custom pearl Adidas for the pearl right here in San Antonio. Jake Dancliffe's made these. He's like the original sneaker customizer. And now we've got them right here available from Richter Goods for the Pearl by Jake Dancliffe. Oh my gosh, I love that. And let's see that the crab on the back one more time. Oh my gosh, that's absolutely it's so yes. cool. It's just a great way to do the tropical theme. All right, tell folks how to find you. you can always find me at LeightonW.com and at the Leighton W on Instagram. For more information on Leighton W Couture, just head to our website, EssayLive.com, and click on the As Seen on Essay Live tab. Well, school's out for summer, so kids need to keep their little minds and bodies active while they aren't in class. And helping us to learn how the San Antonio Public Library is doing just that is Shannon Sieglin, Assistant Manager at Central Children's Department. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. All right, let's talk about some of the crafts we have on the table, because it's all about getting outdoors, right? Right, it is. It's all about getting outdoors. You can go outside with your child and find really cool items in nature to make things. And for example, leaves and flowers, rocks, mm -hmm. all different kinds of tumbleweeds, sticks. Um, so and this is so cute. This is just, of course, the toilet paper roll and and some some glue. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. And then you just take the sticks and some pipe cleaner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of. You can use everyday items that you might have at home, like yarn or baby everyday use pipe cleaners. Um, and. And we have like a little wand here that I've made with some yarn and a crown. Who doesn't love a crown with feathers and leaves and all kinds of things from nature? Okay. All right. And then you can even do just repurposing like an old mm -hmm. tape roll, which my daughter, I know, would wear this bracelet in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's pretty stylish. <laughs> okay, and so what am I using right here? So this is a sentence strip, um, or you can just use like pieces of paper that I like have over here to put together, and then you can just, items that you find, you can just paste them on there, or glue them on, or tape them, and make your own crown. Okay, yeah. and so what are some of the things the library is offering for kids to do this summer? Sure, so um, Summer with Sapple, you can go to any of the library branches and you can sign up and you'll get this great bucket list and you can write your goals for the summer on it. And your goals could be reading five books, it could be 
walking outside with your parents. It's up to you what you want to put on that list. It's totally up to you. Put whatever you want on it and we have something very special once you come and pick up this bucket list and then you can return it at the end of the summer. Also, many of the branches are open for browsing and free Wi-Fi and um, computer access. So if you go to the website, you can see what branches are open. Um, we'd love to have you stop by and visit us and we can recommend books to you. And, and get in and out of the heat, right? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Yes. All right, yeah. for more information on the San Antonio Public Library, just head to our website and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Earlier, what are you binge watching right now? And here's what you said. Yolanda says Jane the Virgin on Netflix. And another one, the following. From Kim. Okay. Uh -huh. What else? I'm trying to get some ideas Virgin here. River. Mary Helen okay. says, what was that? Virgin River? Virgin River, yeah. And the fall. So the fall.